Ladies and gentlemen, we are near to uh, the conclusion of uh, the first day of Vision Golf, and we are privileged to present our esteemed closing keynote speaker, a true source of inspiration and hope. Please welcome Sheikha al Deputy Chief Executive Officer and Chief Business Officer in Qatar Financial Center. Good evening or good late afternoon, everyone. Um, it's good to see that you still have energy and are staying for this uh, closing session. But uh, thank you for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, good afternoon again. It is a pleasure to stand uh, before you today to close the first day of Vision Golf uh, 2023. I want to thank Business France for inviting me and the Qatar Financial Center to participate in this inaugural business uh, conference. Now, the GCC and France have a long history of close relations, underpinned by robust trade, substantial investments, strategic partnerships, and collaborations in various sectors. France is a choice investment destination for GCC countries, and has been for decades due to its strategic geographical location and importance to the European Union, state-of-the-art infrastructure and quality public services, skilled workforce, and a diversified economy with active players, ranging from large multinationals to high-tech startups. Now, in 2021, the GCC's investment in France uh, reached 16 billion euros across various sectors, and notably in real estate, luxury goods, and infrastructure. French companies are active investors and participants in various sectors in the Gulf countries, including energy, transportation, hospitality, and major infrastructural projects such as airports, railways, and urban development. These collaborations have facilitated sharing of expertise and resources between the two sides and fostering technological transfer, knowledge exchange, and most importantly, relationships founded on trust and good business practice. Now, the ties between France and the GCC, as mentioned throughout the day, have contributed to mutual economic growth and development. And Vision Gulf 2023 is an opportunity for all of us today and tomorrow to build on this exciting foundation. The GCC states as a whole are committed to diversifying their economies and prioritizing environmental sustainability, with new opportunities emerging in various sectors such as real estate, telecommunications, data infrastructure, financial technology, and cleaner energy, our region's attractiveness to global investors continues to increase. So investing in this region offers several advantages, including robust legal frameworks, strong creditworthiness, with many currencies pegged to the US dollar, factors that help mitigating potential risks while also securing economic interests. Moreover, the region consists of strong economies with positive GDP outlook, providing investors the opportunity for medium to long-term appreciation of asset value without the volatility associated with foreign exchange fluctuations. The combined economy of the GCC countries is expected to grow by 3.2% in 2023, underscoring the positive momentum and promising prospects in the region. The GCC's fiscal policy as well uh, balance is also expected to remain in surplus in the coming years, promising stable markets to do business. Qatar's diplomatic relations with France date back to 1971, and our nations are woven uh, together through decades of meaningful partnership and economic and cultural exchange. Now, this relationship is strengthened by multifaceted partnerships and significant investments and collaborations across various sectors. Uh, this uh, bilateral trade volume between the two nations has consistently exceeded 1 uh, billion annually in 20, since 2015, um, reaching nearly 1.7 billion US dollars in 2021 alone. Now, France is the second largest European destination for Qatari uh, foreign direct investment, estimated at more than 25.5 billion US dollars. Similarly, France has over 120 companies and franchises in Qatar, fully owned, with a strong presence in our energy sector, including Total Energy's uh, major investment in Qatar's Northfield uh, South Gas uh, project. Now, many of these companies are very involved in Qatar's major projects, notably in infrastructure, transport, and energy, and were critical to the success of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Uh, Qatar companies have developed the infrastructure uh, for our railway system, which is a long-term legacy project for Qatar beyond a mega event like the World Cup, it was a joint venture between Keolis and Eratipe, 
And we are proud as a country to rely on global expertise to develop our uh, nation uh, in terms of its nation building and reaching our uh, national goals of 2030. But many of these companies, whether French or global, are very involved in Qatar's major projects, notably um, uh, c committing to being a strong partner in our journey toward building a long-lasting legacy for Qatar and the region, uh, specifically the Arab world. So we expect this close partnership uh, or bilateral relationship between France and Qatar to grow further, driven by the shared goals of economic development, diversification, outlined uh, in both the Qatar National Vision 2030 and uh, the France 2030 investment plan. So these diversification strategies have created lucrative opportunities across various sectors in both markets, attracting investments and fostering the development of talent. Now our efforts as Qatar towards the realization of our vision have propelled the country as the top investment destination among 50 countries in the FDI standout watch list for 2023. The report reveals an impressive 70% annual growth in FDI projects in Qatar between 2019 and 2022. In simple terms, it was because of our delivery of Qatar, uh, the World Cup in Qatar, which was the first in the Arab world, but also indicating substantial progress beyond investments in the traditional oil and gas uh, sector. So significant projects are emerging in strategic sectors, including business and professional services, software and IT services, tourism and financial uh, services. And this notable shift in Qatar's FDI landscape signifies the commencement and continuation of the transition from a carbon-based economy to a diversified, sustainable and knowledge-based economy, highlighting uh, the country's commitment to long-term economic growth and stability. So I want to outline uh, or underline some key facts uh, about Qatar that make it an ideal investment destination. We are one of the fastest growing emerging economies worldwide, with astute and stable governance, along with the state-of-the-art communication and transportation infrastructure. Our GDP is projected to grow at a rate of 3.3% this year and 2.9% in 2024. And these figures surpass previous forecasts and are a testament to the positive momentum gained from hosting the World Cup in 2022. We offer investors a rich pool of talent and an ecosystem with a state-of-the-art educational infrastructure research programs, and business excellence which promote talent development. We are home to satellite schools of some of the world's most prestigious uh, universities and colleges. Six Ivy League universities operate in Qatar Foundation, Education City Today. We have HSA Paris uh, also offering um, a lot of its higher education and executive education courses in Qatar, which is a testament to uh, the attractiveness of doing business in Qatar um, accessing the talent pool that is available in Qatar and the region, um, and so on. And significantly, Qatar is also keen on equal opportunities in education and employment, and pays serious attention uh, to women empowerment. In fact, Qatar leads in gender equality in the region across numerous metrics, and our drive to empower women has seen women participation in Qatar labor force rise to 57% in 2020, the highest in the Middle East and higher than the global average, according uh, to the World Bank. We are always looking for ways to increase our global economic participation and to develop and maintain a dynamic market for local and uh, foreign investors. Our government continues to implement legislation aimed at liberalizing the business environment for foreign investors. And one compelling benefit of setting up a company in Qatar is having up to 100% foreign ownership of their businesses. We have also enacted legislation to regulate and promote public-private partnerships, enhancing opportunities in various sectors, and to ensure that our global competitive advantage um, is embraced through our digital transformation. We have established a state-of-the-art ICT infrastructure and institutions to spearhead the country's transition to a sustainable, safe, and smart nation. In fact, Microsoft and uh, Google have opened their global uh, cloud centers in Doha, which is a testament to how advanced our regulations are and how business-friendly our jurisdiction as a country um, is. So, as I said, Qatar has already established itself as a choice venue for international events and businesses to come and operate and help us develop our, uh, our country in terms of delivering our vision. But we are also hosting high-level gatherings throughout the year, such as the Doha Forum, Qatar Economic Forum, all the sporting events, which are around 180 plus throughout the year, um, Expo 2023, and the Web Summit, 
which is a specific tech uh, summit, the first of its kind happening in the MENA region, to be hosted in Qatar in 2024. So these events attract investors, business leaders, and government officials from different parts of the world, creating opportunities for participants to network, to connect with decision makers from different parts of the world, and to build know-how um, uh, within the industries uh, that the region uh, has a stronghold on. So besides economic stability, Qatar presents a compelling uh, investment landscape with a strategic location that serves as a gateway to regional and international markets, connecting east to west and vice versa. We have one of the best airlines in the world for the seventh consecutive year, Qatar Airways, which takes you to 170 direct destinations uh, from Qatar. We have state-of-the-art infrastructure, we have several economic zones and free zones uh, operating in the country, again, looking at niche uh, verticals within certain industries that Qatar can play or offer a value proposition that other markets um, don't. And I encourage you all to talk to the Invest Qatar team, our promotional agency. Uh, they will help guide you uh, through the market and, and also advise you if your business makes sense uh, to operate in Qatar or not. So coupled with a well-developed knowledge base, extensive educational resources, robust connectivity, rich cultural heritage, substantial capital resources, makes Qatar an attractive choice for investment, full stop. So to support companies that see the lucrative potential investing in Qatar, we, as the Qatar Financial Center, offer a world-class legal, regulatory tax and business environment, offering a myriad of value propositions, including 100% foreign ownership, 100% repatriation of profits, trading in any currency, 10% tax on locally sourced net profit, benefiting from the double taxation agreement that Qatar has with 83 plus countries, and an onshore environment that allows companies to do business within the state of Qatar and out of the state of Qatar. And of course, an independent legal environment following English common law with courts that do enforce the law. So it's a stable, um, it's a highly regulated in terms of trust and resilience um, uh, jurisdiction. And you can think of us as a Hong Kong or a Singapore model within the state of Qatar, offering you the ability to operate out of Qatar and access other regional markets that Qatar has a strong uh, partnership or trade relationship with, or vice versa. In technology today, you do not need to be in every single country. So you can use Qatar as a hub for that with the world-class infrastructure uh, that I mentioned. Um, in QFC alone, we have 70 companies that are fully owned uh, by French um, uh, ownership um, um, operating in Qatar. A prominent firms such as Credit Agriol, Society General, and Airbus are among these licensed companies. And, of course, these companies benefit from the value propositions I um, uh, mentioned. So we're always seeking further conversation on facilitating companies' uh, entry into our market. So do please uh, introduce yourself today or tomorrow and feel free to ask any questions you might have to us, to the team represented here today. But really, the message I leave you with today is that it is a region that is full of opportunities. It's one of the fastest growing economies um, or emerging markets in the region. You have access to underdeveloped uh, economies that surround the GCC, and it's a win-win it's situation for both Qatar and foreign companies that want to operate out of Qatar. World-class education, world-class legal environments, world-class uh, regulatory environments, and uh, as Qatar, I can speak about my country, we are proud to rely on global expertise. They have helped us develop our oil and gas industry 80 plus years ago, and that's what we're trying to do today, is help use foreign expertise to help us build certain industries that we believe Qatar uh, can export uh, to the rest of the world because it's a small market, a small population. The idea is we're always seeking um, to position Qatar as a hub for export, whether it's via services, products, or know-how and innovation, uh, and so on. So as you all know, I don't know, maybe a show of hands, how many of you attended the World Cup in Qatar? Okay. So for the ones that didn't, apparently, Everyone that I've spoken to or all the news uh, articles that I've read, it is the best World Cup. I don't think it will be repeated again in terms of the proximity, in terms of attending more than one game per day, in terms of the world-class offerings uh, that we provided uh, to families, to individuals that came and enjoyed the game. But um, it was truly a significant moment and history for the entire region. And the memories we hold um, of people from all over the world celebrating together 
um, and experiencing our culture will undoubtedly uh, stay with us as Qataris, but also as an Arab world. But it demonstrated to the world our country's potential to deliver, to innovate, and to, extend, to excel beyond expectation. So Paris is, of course, hosting the next global sporting mega event, the Summer Olympics in 2024, and we wish you every success in your endeavor. We relied on uh, French security to help uh, uh, securitize uh, the World Cup in Qatar, and many other countries supported in that. So I'm sure that Qatar is also um, lending the same hand, if needed, uh, to, to, to France. But as we conclude the first day of this gathering, let's reflect on the valuable insights we gained. Thank you, Business France, for not giving us an opportunity to take many coffee breaks. <laughs> but I, I hope that you made meaningful connections, uh, meaningful um, uh, networks that will stay beyond the, this two-day, um, uh, um, what do you call it, retreat uh, in Paris. And thank you for bringing us to Paris. Uh, you mentioned this in the opening remarks. It is the city of love, of innovation. It is the city that people can all come and feel that they're part, uh, that they're part of. But this is an opportunity where friendships have just begun. And I hope that the conversation remains beyond the event, that we connect with each other, whether it's doing business in Qatar, and Saudi Arabia, and UAE, and Bahrain, and Oman, and uh, Kuwait. At the end of the day, competition is good. We don't consider it competition. We consider it more an opportunity for businesses to decide which jurisdiction is the best one for their business. Sometimes underutilized jurisdictions are better because competition is less, which means that these companies can offer a service that many others are not offering, and vice versa. Competition can also help certain companies innovate and offer services beyond the level that they're offering it uh, today. So it's a win-win for everyone. It's an open region. Uh, looking forward to welcoming your know-how, your expertise, your talents if needed to come to our region, to Qatar. I have to sell uh, my country, but, uh, <laughs> but it's an open call for you to explore, to go on our website, see uh, which industries make sense to your business, or just come and visit and enjoy. Uh, we do offer a touristic uh, experience and a cultural one. And yes, it is different from country to country, even though it's very similar, but there are unique niche differences uh, that uh, you can't tell when you're in Qatar versus Dubai or when you're in Qatar versus Riyadh. So explore it all. Um, I look forward to exploring it myself. Uh, but uh, let's carry forward the spirit of collaboration. Um, let's reflect on the valuable insights uh, we gained and the tangible actions that strengthen our both uh, the bonds between our region and France, but also that help develop our economies, that help create jobs in both the private and public sector and uh, this is uh, good for everyone as a region within our part of the world and for France as well. So thank you all. I'm sorry if I, took, I tried to rush uh, uh, the closing remarks. I hope I covered all the aspects that have been discussed today. But I wish you a wonderful remainder of the day if you're staying for the networking. Um, and uh, hopefully a productive day tomorrow as well. So continue the dialogue. I look forward to uh, receiving a lot of emails from all of you about your interest in doing business in Qatar. <laughs> Otherwise, really, uh, feel free to meet. Maybe, maybe the Qatar team can stand up. I have to cross sell. <laughs> Reach out to them and connect with them. And uh, thank you.